Hey guys, it's me again, the Metaverse Explorer. Uh, we have an interview with the Mint number one owner, Josh. Josh, mate, hey, how are you going? Doing good, mate. How about you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks for joining us on the interview. Uh, it's really nice of you. Yeah, no worries, man. Yeah, no problem. So uh, if, if uh, people don't know, the Red Fox Vault Metaverse has just finished its Genesis quarter um, minting and uh, releases of the shop. We have Josh here who now owns the Mint number one, uh, Mint number one Vault Metaverse shop. So we're going to find out a bit about Josh, what his plans are for the Metaverse shop. So Josh, tell us about you. Who are you in the Metaverse? Where do you come from? How did you stumble upon the Red Fox Vault? So I guess who am I in the Metaverse? Um, you know, not a, not a big wig, not some institutional investor yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> But uh, I do, I do believe in Rfox and what they're trying to do, um, and the team. You know, they're very genuine, and they're more of a actions instead of words type of company. So I believe in that. So I chose to invest in the company, um, and also I stumbled across Rfox because uh, a buddy of mine showed me uh, a uh, you know an article about him. I was like, hmm. And then I just started deep diving and I was like, man, I need to get invested on this. Right. Okay. Uh, you did mention you are investing into it. Uh, just for full transparency, do you have any stake uh, in the actual equity of the company or do you just hold the RFOX cryptocurrency? Yeah, I just hold the crypto. Right. Okay. That's good to know. Awesome. So some friends brought you into the RFOX metaverse and uh, are you grateful to them at the moment being the number one mint holder? Are they jealous? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I didn't think I'd be able to get it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I didn't think I'd be able to get one as well, but congratulations, you managed to snipe it. Uh, tell us a bit more about the auction process for you. Yeah, so that part was crazy, man. So I was, I bid first um, like 80,000, right? I was like, okay, so this is the first shop. Let's see how it's going to go. Like as soon as I opened, I was like, all right, 80, 80K right out the bat, 80K oh, wow. Fox. You, you were straight, and, and, you had a plan, you knew what you wanted. Yeah, but then, dude, within, I'd say, 30 seconds, somebody hits 500k. I was like, all right, let's do this then, bro. <laughs> then I hit 600k, and then somebody else hit 618 and one R Fox. I was like, fair enough, one million R Fox. <laughs> you and just then, gotta cut it short, you know, all these guys trying yeah. to play games, you just, not, nah, nah, that's it. Yeah, and then so it sat that way for about two and a half days until the last hour or about 45 minutes and then 1.5 million came. Yep, I saw and I was, that. And I, and I was about to click bid again, but I was like, let me check this dude out. So I, I did some digging and then the blockchain is public knowledge. Yep. So I dug into his wallet. The initial wallet was not that impressive. So I was like, okay, I can outbid this dude right now that, and win. That's that's the but, supply wallet. There's a wallet behind it. Exactly. So I, I looked down his list and at the very bottom it said in. So I was like, okay, where did it come from? Clicked on that. And he had like $7 million in there. I was yeah. like, all right. So the only way I'm going to be able to beat this dude is if I get him in the last probably 45 seconds. Yep. So that's what I did. So I had the, I was I had one screen up with the transactions coming in from the, the bidding address. So whenever bids come in, they were coming to that address. So it would show. Very on nice. the uh, blockchain so i had that up on one screen on the other screen i had the uh, auction page so i was watching for bids to come in and then 45 seconds hit and it was go time so i started going uh set my bid for two million and nine just because one of my buddies was like put a nine in there i was like, all right dude i'll do it <laughs> so i did it and then uh i sent it through and by the time the transaction completed it was about I think nine or ten seconds left. Oh man, that's close. And then, but as soon as it submitted, s s another transaction was pending. Huh. So huh. I was like, oh man, oh man, oh man. And then, like the transaction, like uh, it still said pending on the blockchain, but the uh, auction ended. So and then the yeah, they pending, didn't get that transaction yeah. through. Yeah, 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 yeah. The pending went away. So I was super lucky because he oh. would have gotten it. 
Wow, yeah, so you sniped it uh, like with nine seconds to go. They weren't able to uh, get their bids in in time. So that's the blockchain. Yeah. If you're not able to uh, send your transaction in time and get broadcast, that doesn't get recognized. So um, that being said, what uh, I'm pretty into, gas, price, gas prices on Ethereum are pretty high at the moment. Can I ask about what kind of uh, GUI you set? How high of a price you, you spent to send these transactions? So I just... Yeah, I just clicked on the highest one because now the and I, I use MetaMask. Yep. So the the highest setting was, uh, I think it was like eighty eight or eighty nine dollars, right. which really wasn't bad. You know, I was prepared to pay like two hundred, three hundred, um, but it went through no problems. Um, so yeah, I yeah. didn't have any issues. That's good. I think when you're prepared to pay like over a hundred thousand dollars for something that you want, eighty eight dollars is kind of reasonable. You're happy to part with it. No problems. Yeah. All right, so well done. Uh, congratulations to you again, man. Uh, you're you're practically a, a um, you're going to be a celebrity pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. So thank, um, thank you. You've heard uh, with I've heard in the community that you uh, you actually like to help people a lot. Now, is this in um, in regards to crypto in general or in real life? Can you elaborate on that a bit more, please? Yeah. So um, I actually uh, am starting a company called JCJ Advisory Group and we will help people get invested into cryptocurrency so that's one way i like to help people um Interesting. because you know I, I like stocks and all that but i don't personally invest because i think it's kind of rigged for the uh, the big boys to win it is you know um but crypto is so new man and it's it's yeah, like always, always changing and, and you know and uh, it's got so many new and innovative ideas that I think that that is going to be the future. It's like it's just like the uh, the internet boom. You know, when the internet first started, everybody was like, "Ah, that's a joke." And then you know, here we are today. Look where we are. Yeah. Exactly. To, so to, to continue what you were saying, yeah, I think it is a little bit rigged, and we can see the transparency that the blockchain can give us. So, for example, exactly. you were able to see all the transactions that were actually bidding for this shop, and you, as mm -hmm. like a, a normal person, had to compete against this guy who get, who had five million, seven million dollars. In the traditional sense, we wouldn't even be able to sit in the same room with them, but on the blockchain, this allows you to do that. How crazy is that? Yeah, cause he, you know, he would have just paid somebody off, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to get this, just so you know. Yeah, exactly. And and it would have been like a, a behind-the-scenes handshake deal, you know what yep. I mean? It's just, yep. It's I, and I agree with you, the, the transparency, and just to, it goes to show, just a couple of days ago, the uh, one of the guys from uh, OpenSea got in trouble. Yeah, because I saw that. You, did you, yeah, you saw you see that? Yep, so, he's front running you know, um, all the NFTs. He bought it before it was actually listed on the front page. And when it was listed on the front page, everyone wants it, he sells it. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty bad. All right, we'll move on. So, can you give us a sneak peek of uh, what your plans are for your Mint number one brand new shop? What are you going to do with it? So, um, the main thing I want to do is like I said, help people. So the way that I think we could do that and, you know, um, bring everybody's ideas, you know, to the front is um, if you want to sell your NFTs, you know, your cogs, like you got a product that you want to move, but you didn't have enough money for a vault, then A, you can put it in my shop. And, um, you know, I mean, I have to make money too to pay the... I think there's some kind of fee associated with it, but yeah, um, correct so, correct me if I'm wrong, but... No, um, there is a fee. There is a transaction fee that is um, uh, t takes off and goes off to the VFOX holders and all the quartermasters and everything else. But you'll, of course, you'll be charging a commission fee on top of this to allow people to sell their products in your yeah. shop because they can't really afford a shop in, in by themselves. Yeah, and, and I'm not trying to get rich off of people, man. I'm not trying to screw anybody over. It's just 10%. So put as much stuff as you want in there. I'm not concerned about that. I mean, because it's virtual. I mean, you can put as much stuff as you want. You could have it be in a little box, and there's like thousands of things in there, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, Technically, you can sell like a COGS bundle of 99 COGS, and that, you know, could be one item. You know, that's how it works. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so just, just helping people, um, trying to make something cool. Uh, you know, I was talking about talking to Benny and um, Ge Urban Gecko about uh, doing something like uh, Team Labs has done and it'd be like a virtual art experience. Like it interacts like if you touch the wall, 
in the room like it reacts and like nice. a little bird will like take off you know so it's nice. it'll be uh pretty interesting to see what happens with that i think that's uh a bit more than the default settings that are available in the vault oh, yeah. right now so you might have to uh, uh incur some personal cost to set that up but hey you oh, know, yeah. after a set amount of time people putting their items in your shop you can collect this 10 percent commission fee and build towards that so are you in well, contact with any developers to do this well, so that's actually uh, what uh, Urban Gecko is going to do. Oh. Um, so yeah, he's going to be the architect behind everything. And then uh, obviously we're going to work out something. I'm going to cut him in on the profits because, you know, that's just what you're supposed to work. do. You're supposed to take, yeah, you're supposed to take care of people. So, um, and it's, it's a lot of work. So he doesn't think it's going to be a lot of work, right. but we'll, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see what he can do. Well, yeah, if he, if he, he if it pays off he does the work he gets to get paid that's good yeah oh yeah all right so uh, we'll move on so the vault itself the metaverse so the metaverse is like the this idea that there is a whole nother layer to the world we live in which is the virtual world and now that blockchain has come everyone kind of gets providence over their items in the virtual world i used to get sick of uh, playing a game and i couldn't take anything all my time and effort from one game i couldn't go to another game you know we're seeing examples of this new things like cogs where they are keys to other games so the vault itself is new what do you think of the vault itself the entire concept you know the architecture the the buildings the shops itself the experience what do you think oh there's definitely a reason why i tried to get the first vault um yeah. because i think this thing is going to be the next big thing um a lot of people aren't talking about it which is kind of surprising to me because uh you know just the possibilities that can come of it are pretty endless you know uh, and especially everything that kind of plugs into um, the vault now, you know, our Fox Media, uh, the game. The whole ecosystem, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, everything plugs into it, man. So I'm like, how are you guys not jumping in on this right now? And, it, and they will, but once, you know, by the time our Fox is already at a dollar, you know what I mean? But, oh, man, this thing is awesome. Yeah. Like, after after it pumps, everybody's going to be like, oh, this is the craziest thing ever. That's, that's, I think that's the beauty of it, isn't it? We have, uh, you have information that you think this is going to be worth more than the other person. So you get in before the masses. That's, that's just how it works, isn't it? That's life. Yep. All right, so cool. Um, what do you think about some of the, have you, so you have a specific shop and uh, later on I'll bring up the actual shop that you earn, Pix underscore O one. Where is that location? And did you think about the location of the shops at all or you just wanted Mint number one or the design so, of the shop? Which design do you have actually? So I think the design is probably the coolest design. I think it's the pal Palanoma, pal Pala something. I don't know. <laughs> we'll try and find it. Yeah. But uh, I think it, I think. Uh, yeah. But uh, it looks really cool. Um, but the, uh, the position wasn't really the number one concern. The concern was getting the first one. But yep. as a bonus, the first one is also right next to a marquee shop. Yes. And as soon as you come in through the origin or you come in through the, um, the uh, transportation, yeah, down the at the bottom. At the bottom. Yep. Yeah. So if you come through the origin, you can see it. You know, depending on where you are, to your right hand side or left hand side, depending on the orientation. Um, so I think it being right next to a, <clears throat> excuse me, being right next to a marquee shop is huge. Yeah, you'll get some nice foot traffic coming out there. That's pretty good. So you thought about the design, which was one of your favorite ones, and you also thought about the location and what you can see. That's good. All right. So, um, what are your hopes for the vault? We talked a bit about that. Well, what do you personally think people should expect from the vault? We've seen little walkthroughs now. We've seen what it is in development right now, and that's the transparency of Red Fox Labs. They try to show us uh, as they're being built. What do you think it could turn into in the next five, ten years if we get that far? Oh man, if we can get, um, you know five to ten years especially ten years man i i don't even know what's going to be in there because you know it's going to be like a completely new world yeah virtual um, reality people will be in there shopping you know yeah eating, ordering food yeah going in there to the, to the nike shop or you know louis vuitton or burberry or you know whatever and like shopping in the store but you can actually grab something off the rack put it in your cart and then it gets shipped to your house so yep. you know it, it's it's going to be insane man uh 
And I think that is going to become more and more of a, a reality as we go through, especially right now with COVID. So uh, I think that's another reason why VR is taking off because everybody's locked down, man. So yeah, people need new experiences to you know spice up their life. So um, yeah. like uh, functions like these are already existent on the chain. Like so, uh, DCL. I think there's a Domino's there now. You can order a pizza, and uh, some of these things might be incorporated into Axie Land or or Crypto Voxels. So why did you specifically choose the Red Fox Vault shop instead of Decentraland or instead of Axie Plots? Uh, or are you involved in them as well? I don't know. No, nah, I'm not. Um, the reason uh, I chose RFox is, like I said, because they got their their hands in so many different the sectors. The ecosystem. Yeah. So the, the ecosystem was probably the number one, um, I guess, catalyst for me. Uh, you know, investing in the RFox token and then trying to get the first shot. Yeah. Because I think that it's when it hits, dude, you know, everybody's complaining like, oh, man, prices prices down prices going down like when when moon when lambo and all that yeah but you're sleeping I, I, before. yeah exactly i really think that as soon as this thing hits everybody's gonna be like oh man i should have bought more um i think it's really gonna do something special and i would not be surprised if it hits a dollar by the end of the year no, bold statement bold yeah um is there anything you want uh, people watching to know? Like, is um, people exploring the metaverse, should they start to get ready for the shift in the future that's coming? In regards to gaming, virtual experiences? Do you think people should get to know Web3? People should install MetaMask? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, definitely do your research. You know, start, start diving down the rabbit hole. Um, because, you know, the further you get now, um, the further you'll be ahead in the future when everybody else jumps on board. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So Josh, we've got a few community questions, just two. Are you, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. are you excited for Pokemon? <laughs> when Pokemon? Well, yeah. Hopefully, uh, Ben can make that happen, man. <laughs> so guys, that's just an inside joke from the Red Fox family. Uh, no Pokemon confirmed, guys. Calm down. No Pokemon. So, um, I've got another community question for you. Um, what is your favorite kind of soup? Uh, I'll go with, say, clam chowder. It's a favorite. Clam chowder. Nice. I think mine is like just, uh, just chicken noodle soup. Very plain, simple, warm, nice and, nice and good when you're sick. And um, the last community question is, um, are you going to be the Batman of the metaverse and protect our community? I mean, I'm not saying I'll have a butler and be a super rich superhero, but But you we'll will dress happens. up for us. You will dress up for us. Yep, sure will. <laughs> nice. Okay, um, I'll get any last words you want to say to us, Josh, before everyone uh, sees this interview? Uh, no, uh, thank you guys. You know, thank you, Metaverse Explorer, for the interview. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and hopefully we can talk soon, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I'll meet you in the Vault Metaverse. I'll come and interview you in front of your shop. We'll see what the architecture is doing, what um, uh, Urban Gecko is going to do for you, and see some of the, um, the new products that some community members will be putting in your shop. Yeah, man. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Josh, for joining us. Guys, yep. this is Thank the you. Metaverse Explorer. Thank you, Josh. Uh, Thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you later. Like and subscribe if you want more content. Remember, this is the Metaverse Vault. You should really try and find out about Web3 experiences. Guys, thank you so much. Ciao.